So there are two stories that have been uh, making the rounds uh, in social media over uh, the past couple of weeks. One is about a child who was involved in, who has been involved in crime, especially at the behest and the support of uh, his parent. And then secondly, there was that. Uh, that social that that video that made rounds in social media of a mother who was gruesomely beating her child but according to the computer misuse amendment bill of 2022 those whoever shared those videos would be liable to punishment and would be uh, liable for uh, uh, sharing those videos without permission one the, for the first instance without permission of the child's parents and of the second instance for shooting or recording a video without permission of the person who is involved in the video and that is why we are talking about the computer misuse misuse amendment bill of 2022 and we're going to talk about it here on issues at hand on family tv and especially what it means for those of us in the media fraternity now welcome to issues at hand proudly brought to you by protea hotel and tv and thank you for always being part of the team and of a, a family that looks to tackle issues and so that we can move forward in our community in our families and in our great nation which is the republic of uganda my name is bruno edgar and my guest for today is a Mr. Robert Sempala. He is the team leader and executive director of Human Rights and Network for Journalists Uganda. Welcome to Issues at Hand today. Uh, thank you, Bruno, for having me. I'm very happy to be here. I feel family. Yes, you are family. Welcome sure, sure. to so Family much, yeah. TV. Yep. And thank you for joining us. And now, uh, before we get into uh, Matcha's Computer Misuse Amendment Bill 2022, first tell us about uh, the Human Rights Network for uh, Journalists Uganda. Yeah, Human Rights Network for Journalists Uganda, popularly known as HRNJU, is a media rights organization. It's a membership organization uh, housed in uh, Bokoto, near Kabira Country Club. Um, we started way back in 2005 and uh, became a legal entity in 2006 and since then we've been documenting a lot about um, journalist rights and freedom of expression we've been building capacities of journalists severally uh, we've been um, offering legal aid and support to victim journalists who've been um, you know interfacing with the key stakeholders by way of advocacy networking and trying to end here uh, a lot of our work to uh, uh, to many uh, members of the community and um, we have uh, literally uh, seen it all. We've been at police stations, we've been in the trenches, we've been um, uh, everywhere, particularly trying to amplify uh, the plight of uh, media practitioners, but also trying to impress it upon everyone that journalists need uh, their rights and their freedom to do their work, and that they are human rights defenders. That's a thing that all journalists have to buy in because if you say we are the eyes and ears of the public, literally, you're standing in the gap for other people. So you are a human rights defender by definition and by, uh, you know, practice. Um, we are non-partisan, of course, we do not take political sides, but all our team members at work um, vote, literally meaning the uh, civically available work, only that we do not take partisan lines because people tend to confuse issues of being a uh, political and partisan. You can be political but non-partisan. This is what uh, every other person should be, especially if you're a media practitioner. Because you can't vote and say, I mean, I'm a political, I don't know those things, I don't follow them. Then who, how are you even empowering the community to make informed, informed decisions? So we are non-partisan. We don't segregate in any way against our colleagues. Um, um, and um, our offices remain very open. And so we always um, are very present when it comes to issues of uh, freedom of expression, most importantly, uh, journalist rights. Freedom of expression and journalist rights. Now, as we get into this discussion, uh, many of us, may, uh, many of our family members and viewers may be watching and thinking we are talking about this because especially as Family TV, mm -hmm. we are also members mm -hmm. of the media fraternity. Mm -hmm. But uh, when it comes to media rights, as we get into this discussion, what's their importance? Why is it important for this right of expression to be protected, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to a democracy like Uganda? Yeah, um, press freedom or freedom of expression is a very, very key tenet of uh, democracy. It's a huge hallmark for democracy globally. 
And you can even assess the level of democracy in a given societal country going by how the media is treated. If it is uh, liberally free, you certainly know that uh, democracy is flourishing. If there are bottlenecks um, for them and they can't practice freely, if there are enormous reprisals for them doing their work, you certainly know that they have challenges with their democracy. And um, it's so important that if they're able to speak uh, to, to, to issues that happen around, they are holding leaders accountable, um, they're playing a watchdog role over society, uh, they are empowering the communities and crusading for them about issues that touch them. Uh, literally, they are mobilizing the country, in, uh, and by so doing, they are pushing towards economic growth and development, and um, the media is the only clear mirror of society. So they only can do that if they have uh, their space to operate uh, unimpeded. If, uh, of course, they have um, restrictions, you know that they will only do a few and leave out a lot, a lot of work, especially the civil and political rights issues. Normally, have problems. So, in order for the media to to to, to say it is free, it should be able to speak about those issues, to hold the powerful accountable, and there are no reprisals. You know, to to expose the corrupt, gross abuse of power and offices. And this doesn't only go to politicians, but to wherever one is, and uh, they're in an office where uh, they sit in there for and on behalf of other people. They really must be held to account. So the only uh, vehicle that can drive that home is the media. And that's why we really need to have them, to see, to see them have a smooth flow as a vehicle, to reach everywhere, to fish out everything, and bring out to the public for, for you know, public scrutiny holding everyone uh, liable for whatever it is that they do. Um, that's why we always advocate for free media. Because if that is all in place, uh, you literally can just go by the media reports and see what is happening around you, be able to cry out if nobody is listening to you. And no wonder they have been so helpful in trying to amplify voices of the unprivileged whose uh, property is being you know, stolen away by the powerful special land. People rarely run to court. Because with the court is extremely ex exhaustive in terms of resources, money and time and everything. But media can break your story today and then the powers that be can come to your rescue. Uh, just you made mention of, uh, of um, a, a mother who was beating uh, a two-year-old kid. And um, somebody, a citizen journalist, recorded this and exposed. Didn't have to, to go to police anyway. Just had to put it out there. And the powers that be apprehended the person who was aligned in court. And the sentence was served 18 months in jail. So that is the essence of um, media. You really bring out what everybody cannot be able to see. For instance, there was a constitutional uh, a Supreme Court uh, petition, presidential petition, somewhere in Bali. We all could not gather in one court premise to you know, follow up issues, but we could follow through the media. That's where the media is really, really very important. That is the power of the media now. Uh when it comes to the Computer Misuse Amendment Bill 2022, the amendment proposes a raft of punitive measures against people who send malicious information, hate speech, unsolicited information, and sharing information about children without the consent of parents and guardians, and this among others. And we are going to get right into this. And so, uh, some of the critics of this amendment have come out to say that this bill, this amendment, which was passed by parliament, by the way, and is going to become an act of law, is looking to police communication, especially the internet and social media. So in light of what you have just said about the importance of the freedom of uh, expression and press freedom, mm. what is your take on this bill? Um, it is very unfortunate that we have a parliament which clearly endorses many uh, very uh, um, sad uh, pieces of legislation like that because it's extremely sad. Uh, we, as a Human Rights Network for Genesis Uganda, uh, made submissions before the ICT committee, chaired by engineer Moses Magogo, who is literally my friend, and uh, we impressed it upon the MPs in the committee. They all seem to, uh, to agree with us that this amendment uh, bill in its entirety was a redundant because it is sought to address issues that all, all, all had um, already exhaustive laws to, to address them. So there was nothing new that the law was seeking to cure. Um, even when they sought to, um, to, to introduce very stringent and deterrent punishments, they did not anywhere, anywhere prove that uh, the current ones were so lenient and so people were becoming habitual offenders. 
did not prove anything to that effect. Uh, but the mover of the Maybe same... My, my um, answer to that would be, and well, I'm not an advocate for parliament, but you can make a case that we're having a problem in terms of social media misuse in which certain persons, not everyone, but certain persons can record malicious information or at, uh, go and spread lies about someone, even like you or me, mm. on social media, which leads to disrepute of the person. And many of this information <laughs> is untrue. So yeah. maybe there's a case for coming up with a law which seeks to protect people from a malicious use of is, social media. By uh, Bruno, persons. it's extremely difficult to play devil's advocate where there's completely no justification in this because uh, uh, people have always been suffering from this and there have been exhaustive remedies legally for them to seek for, 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 for justice. And the police, uh, especially said, is handling those issues. Not that there is no uh, legal framework to catering for that. And this is why, as a challenge, we address ourselves uh, um, to, to the bill clause by clause. And so at the end of uh, our presentation, the MPs could not l l tell us anything that was left bare. You know, that I uh, you know this is something new that uh, the, the bill seeks to introduce. And uh, I was privy to the submissions of the uh, move of the bill, Honorable Muhammad in Seleko, when he was in the committee. And his preoccupation was uh, things that were not in the bill, you know, appealing to the psyche, uh, emotional uh, feelings of the MPs, telling them what if you sit down somewhere, someone takes your photo, blah, blah, blah. All the things are legally taken care of. Uh, because as journalists, we know our parameters. Yeah? Uh, you don't abuse one's privacy. You do not uh, jeopardize security. You do not incite violence. You, do not, you know, the exhaustive remedies for each and everything. And uh, the supersonic speed at which this bill was handled is very suspicious because it's the only one, at least as far as I know, that was uh, allowed to be tabled in Parliament without a certificate, a certificate of financial implication. That never happens. The Minister of Finance has to first sieve through and see if they have the resources to implement a, a certain law, if passed. Two, um, uh, public uh, presence and uh, submissions um, were cut short. Uh, of course, summarily cut short. Because for us, we made submissions, but because somebody uh, invited us in the night at around 11.30 p.m. in the night to say, guys, we know you already have made an analysis to this amendment and you're going to present something, but it's ending tomorrow, Tuesday. So we had to put our pieces together immediately run to Parliament, only that they did not raise a quorum. There was only the chairperson and uh, one other MP. So we were posted to another a day later, like Thursday. We so we were there and uh, made, made our presentations. Mama Din Sereko comes and uh, argues things that are not contained in the bill, literally meaning that was uh, bringing in, like sneaking in arguments that could, had no uh, place in law. Uh, the Computer Misuse Act, which is being amended, or 2011, which is being amended, was bad in its current state already. And that's why the Uganda Law Society went to court challenging it. Andrew Kalamaji and another went to court versus the Attorney General challenging it in the Supreme Constitutional Court. Ourselves, the challenger, went to, the, to court challenging the same. And having uh, affidavits sewn in by uh, people who had fallen victim because of their work, um, using the computer means well, maybe to help us understand the clearer picture what were some of the arguments against that bill that that act uh, the act of 2011 that needed uh, section 2405 of the same introduces the offense of uh, uh, offensive communication yeah? that uh, by so communicating I'm offending you doesn't address the reality of whether this is factual or not and uh, continuously it was being used by so many to say I'm offended by your communication but because I don't have to care whether you get offended or not as long as you do something wrong it's not my uh, my, my having to make you happy and this law seeks to uh, curtail journalists from you know um, properly uh, holding uh, the powerful accountable because it's but where, where's the balance and, also, and we're um, going to get into that discussion on on protection of rights but where's the balance because yes as as the media as journalists we have a duty uh, to ensure that the public knows about what is happening in the communities what's happening uh, with either leaders or with uh, respective people in uh, society but where is the boundary in terms of ensuring that as we we hold some of these leaders accountable we again do not infringe on their right to privacy 
and, and I guess that's the discussion that's bringing up this amendment. Um, the Data Protection and Privacy Act is very clear, exhaustive about that. There are even safeguards for everyone in the reservations of the rights to, of journalists. Why do not do A, B, C, D? A litany of clauses in our constitution, and they're very clear. We made them very public to, to, to the committee. Um, but what I think this bill in the national seeks to introduce is to deal away with the uh, dissent. That um, somebody, supposing I'm investigating you, uh, Bruno, how can I seek for permission from you to record your audio or video? I'm investigating, I'm a journalist. I have to expose you because you're doing uh, you misusing power, you misusing using public resources. Literally meaning I can now investigate you. Two, uh, say unsolicited information. Um, as I was coming here, my uh, service provider, TV service provider, calls me or uh, sends me a message. Uh, actually, this time they sent me a message. I didn't respond to it because it was unsolicited. For I asked, I'm going to try this law from seven I sent to it. Uh, and uh, take them to, to court saying you sent me something unsolicited for and see if that charge can stand. Uh, but they're calling me to find out about my, how I perceive their services. Yeah? And uh, according to Nseleko, they're supposed to be a crime. Now, like you said, in Riwelo, if a parent is abusing uh, their kids, I'm supposed to seek for permission from them to record and let alone share a video of them battling kids like that. You, you do not have a provision to, to, to do that anymore. Uh, supposing I am um, uh, UN TV here and somebody is recording us because this is a public TV, uh, family TV, and they record now on their screens and share this. Uh, we, we, we're supposed to, they're supposed to come to us for, for permission, that vagueness. Eh? So the law is dealing with now social media indirectly because there's been an attempt there was an attempt at it uh, by ucc to say everybody who shares an audio or video must seek authority of the ucc and they're saying no these gadgets were not made with cameras without a purpose globally and uh, people at liberty to express themselves once you're born you have an inherent right of expression whether a journalist or not in this regard people should not only, only think that you're arguing because you're a journalist but we have an in inherent rights. Supposing you are an expert in um, dental surgery and you want the public to care about their teeth well, um, you don't have to seek for permission to share something about it. And according to Muhammad Inseleko and the proponents of this, is that for everything that you're going to do with your phone, you have to seek for authorization. Yeah, for every information that comes to me, uh, uh, like for politicians doing campaigns, they have to seek for my authority before they share anything with me. That is not practical. Anyway, globally, one time I was in the U.S. and I was at the State Department, and was privileged to uh, the lady, uh, former Ghanaian and now uh, American, who was handling President Obama's um, social media platforms, and we asked her, oh, "How come they're really showing uh, the president?" And uh, we see very ugly uh, you know sharings about him and you guys don't pull them down you don't act says yes they're right to criticize the president as long as in uh, is in the white house uh, is not uh, uh, beyond scrutiny and that is what makes him strong and powerful said the, okay uh, then That's how many makes a democracy mm, a democracy and then i ask how many judges do you have in the u.s said we don't you know the only purpose for which we can know the number of journeys is because they pay taxes you know but if it were not for that would never have known because the, the U.S. does not give them, uh, you know, money, does not employ them. They, they just, uh, other citizens doing their work. So even these things of saying how many agents do, uh, do we have, and you're not planning anything for them, just to, you know, control them, is not healthy. And if we must borrow best practices from democracies globally, we must look at these things. Globalization today is open, calling for opening up. For us, approach paired with closing up all the spaces through which people uh, go through to share to hold their leaders accountable, to reach out to their publics. Government is coming up with a portal where you can ask your government and are saying everything must be uh, you know, authorized before you even share. So it, it is a lot of vagueness in the legislation and I am really, really bothered by uh, how parliament was quick to pass this. We now are going to appeal to the president, certainly not to sign this. Um, we are already drafting our letter to him. We make it very public. Uh, but if it goes ahead, which we highly suspect, of course, uh, given the supersonic speed at which everything is being handled, we'll then go to court to challenge it. We are in Makere School of Law, and we are arguing with the distinguished lawyers over this bill. And we could not find merit whatsoever in the amendment. Um, all of us in the hall, I was a panelist there with uh, distinguished uh, members of uh, the legal fraternity. We're looking at clause by clause. 
calling for input by the wider public uh, of the lawyers. We couldn't find any. Then you go to the Ministry of ICT, they who appeared before the committee and said, no, we don't also buy into this because for us are uh, busy coming up with something ex exhaustive, not this. It's a ministry that is in charge of ICT, where this squarely falls. Then you have uh, experts, literally, criticizing a lawyer, Muhammad Inseleko, introducing this. So you're not legislating to control people's uh, freedom of expression by taking it away, you know, and over legislation. Is, uh, is counterproductive to a democracy. If you already have clauses that really squarely address issues, you don't introduce others. For instance, if uh, somebody says people are peddling hate speech, uh, uh, falsified information against others, uh, where is the Supreme Court, uh, uh, Supreme Court uh, judgment of Joseph Molenga in the Charles Onyango book case, where they say you should not you know, put in people for telling you a lie. Instead, you come in to count a lie with a fact. That's natural growth and discussion, how discussions grow. Because at the time you start a discussion, you're not sure about all the things. But through a discussion, you come to a certain compromise and you all at a common con convergence. Yeah? So you do not say there are three people in this studio, yet there were four and you didn't see the other uh, you know, sleeping this side, and then somebody takes you to court saying, saying you paid all the lie. No, that's not healthy. Even in, in terms of uh, you know uh, uh, um, discussions and uh, you know robust discussions and bring out issues of concern. Um, that's why the the five justices of the Supreme Court found it extremely untenable to hold journalists accountable for peddling a lie. He said, if he said five people and there are six, use the same space. Say there are six people, and that is natural. You know, to differ in terms of numerical, actually say, and in terms of um, philosophical addresses to different situations, you cannot say I'm committing a crime because I am not agreeing with you on something with like you, it. Exactly, and, uh, and it seems like uh, for some, this amendment is a way of, uh, well, according to many critics, that this is a way of uh, government bigwigs and parliamentarians protecting themselves from scrutiny from the public. But Let's go through some of the provisions that uh, people are not happy with or that depending on which side of the boat you're on that some uh, people uh, are happy with. Now we shall uh, talk about uh, unauthorized sharing of information about children. A person shall not send, share or transmit any information about or relating to a child through a computer unless the person obtains consent of the child's parent, guardian or any other person having authority to make decisions on behalf of the child. Now a person who contravenes uh, this uh, particular subsection commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine not exceeding 750 currency points or imprisonment not exceeding seven years or both and then when it comes to one of the critical provisions and that is hate speech a person shall not write send or share any information through a computer which is likely to ridicule uh, degrade or demean another person group of persons a tribe an ethnicity a religion or gender or b create divisions among persons a tribe an ethnicity or a religion or gender or c promote hostility against a person group of persons a tribe an ethnicity a religion or gender now uh, any person who contrib contravenes this subsection commits an, of an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine not exceeding uh, 750 currency points or imprisonment not exceeding uh, seven years or both now the reason why i brought up the the liabilities is because there are some critics of this amendment of this uh, amendment bill that are saying that uh, the punishments are too stringent that, uh, that they are too harsh and uh, mm. uh, my question to you is is that so if, if indeed we are heading towards having this amendment bill being passed as an act of law um, it's extremely true uh, because uh, doesn't cater for public interest uh, because where you have citizen journalists all over the world where people are exposing uh, for instance uh, during elections others pre-ticking barrels rigging elections and somebody is supposed to ask to ask for permission before they can record and share the same yeah, where you're supposed to consult the public if you can share with them, like unsolicited. And this is all in public interest, trying to, you know, uh, defend the free and fair uh, electoral process. But there, according to this bill, you're held accountable. You're committing a crime for doing that. That is not even reasonable before a lay person, leave alone a lawyer or legislators who are proponents of the same. And 
then it also imposes sanctions criminal sanctions on people who say um dividing people ethnically and i you can't even prove to me that it is me who speaks about it that must be liable and not the one who you know manifests it who creates it for instance i were in the studios and i come from the east and then i say uh, bruno must be from the east robert the guest must be from the east and the camera person must be on from the east so if I talk about it, when I find three people from the East in this studio, uh, from the gate everywhere, then I'm um, uh, promoting sectarianism. Can, can, does, does that even make sense? Uh, that's why some journalists were taken to court over the same, uh, the, the, the Bizonto guys. Uh, and we're defending them with their lawyers um, because that's freedom of expression in the first place but what they stated was factual according to me media law uh, courses that we all undertook uh, one is not committing a crime if they are factual it's a defense uh, if you said yes uh, so and so is the president so and so is in this so and so is everywhere here so we wanted we prayed so hard that that matter be sustained in court for them to come and say, we said so and so is the president and is not. It's from the north. We said so and so is the president. And so at the end of the day, the, 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 the state lost interest in that matter. Of course, we were disappointed that uh, these guys were kept in communicado at the CIU in Chileka, tortured a bit, and then later on, when we, we, we made a lot of noise, they were produced to court and charged with the same offense that you're talking about. And once we wanted it to, to, to proceed in court so that we could bring our defense, the state attorney loses interest in the matter and is a uh, kind of killed and we lost an opportunity to say to prove that uh, what some people are saying sometimes is is right even when it offends you you do not seem to like it to hear it it is a fact a statement of fact and it's a huge difference in law if it's a statement of fact so uh like you said that some people have already said that um, the powerful are trying to ring face themselves from public scrutiny exactly that's what has is happening but also elections 2026 is at play because you saw what happened with uh, the recent elections people were not prevailed to accessing mainstream media and they resorted to social media to say this is happening i am here so and so is kidnapped this is a, a, a torture victim and those uh, media was uh, the world was awash with uh, you know such sharings uh, so i think now the powerful are trying to run away from that as well because if you must share a video, somebody is being tortured, and for you to record, uh, you know, you must seek for authorization. Does it even make sense in a, let, in a, let in me a, give you a an civilized example. and open world? Doesn't. Let me give you an example of uh, uh, social media misuse and maybe why there might be a, again why there might be a space for a particular particular provision. Is it not going to fall under the, the because, original uh, or the parent law? Because well, you know that we made the law. You must have loopholes in the same. Which you agreed, to, go, you agreed to the fact that there were loopholes in the existing law of 2011. No, no, it was bad. That was saying, you know, loopholes, it was bad in itself. Eh? So it is even getting worse. That's what we are saying. We're not challenging that they are, you know, miss, uh, missed out on key issues that needed to be in the legislation. We are only saying that they legislated in a way that takes away people's inherent rights and freedoms. That's what we are saying. And our point of quotation is there. And Thank we you are for clarifying uh, that because on the discussion of what are facts and what are, uh, what are lies, one of the things in many discussions I have uh, in many of the families I mean, mm. we have a discussion on this in that I keep saying that when it comes to celebrities or leaders, people who are always uh, in the public eye, the, the difference between them and uh, some uh, and many of the citizens who mm. live their lives normally is that they always have a camera pointed at them. And unfortunately, if if a, a, a leader does something, especially in their private life, let's say there's a scandal, mm. uh, a, 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 a scandal, there's a mistress somewhere involved, if the leader is married, the, the, the difference between that person and someone else who doesn't have the camera pointed at them is that this one always has a camera pointed at them and so everyone is going to make a known their business and this person is committing adultery and yet this person who doesn't have the camera pointed at them is protected and has privacy and no one will know about it so isn't that the don't we have to find strike that balance in that yes this is a public leader and we all want to know about their lives even mm -hmm. their personal lives yes. but there has to be a place of privacy that they enjoy as every 
just like other members of of the country when it comes to even scandals in their families yes. that they have we have to keep them private and as journalists we don't have to it's it's a fact that the scandal might be happening but you don't really have to expose all of them so yes. that we protect uh, the their privacy bruno the access to information act is exhaustively clear on the go the do's and don'ts when it comes to privacy of people the data protection uh, the data uh, privacy and protection act is extremely exhaustive about that so you do not need a new law to address what was already uh, 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 catered for in the in the current legal framework and i am very sad that legislators did not address themselves to the existing legal frameworks they would not they would have discarded this into a dustbin without any doubt or question but i even talked to two legislators who are signed uh, on be, uh, for uh, uh, the amendment they were part of the committee members and they, we, we are reading close by close of the laws that we made mention and they say hey this is exhaustive this is exhaustive but they really had signed so it means that uh, they are giving us a road deal the, these people are not as informed as we would wish and so they are wasting a lot of pu public uh, taxpayers' money in doing things that are going to be turned around tomorrow. I'm sure if all of us are going to go to the Constitutional Court to challenge uh, uh, the law if uh, the President uh, signs on to it, it's certainly going to be uh, overturned uh, in the interest of um, diversity, in the interest of democracy, in the interest of uh, journalism and uh, its independence. And so in the instance that this... A uh, bill that has been passed is assented to by the president. What is the future for the media fraternity? Where do we go from here? Um, we'll be between a, a rock and a very hard place uh, for journalists. It will have dealt away or a last blow to investigative journalism because um, you have to seek for authorization before you record audios and videos of people, before you take people's pictures, according to Muhammad in Seleko, and now according to parliament. Uh, it will have taken away uh, dissent, you know, like having voices that are contrary to what the leaders uh, believe and think, um, think. It will have introduced a closed society where the privileged are untouchable, are beyond uh, 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 any degree of criticism, and that uh, um, they become now the lawyers, you know, walking around. Um, but most importantly, it, it will have killed democracy because in a democratic society uh, freedom of, of expression is a key pillar like I said in the beginning is a hallmark of democracy uh, all that will have uh, uh, been dealt the last blow of the president ascends to this uh, particular bill and uh, literally speaking there would be a lot of uh, anger saturating within people but they won't be able to express themselves and that is extremely counterproductive because it risks uh, exploding, it's, uh, explosive in nature once the uh, due time is, is, is then. As opposed to if people can, uh, you know, speak out to each other, can expose um, the mal uh, use of offices, you know, a lot can, can happen if people are able to, to, to speak um, about what they are suffering from, what they are going through. Uh, but for me, most importantly, um, this bill and the law at large, the Computer Ministries Act 2011, is a bad law. It should not be allowed to stand. And I am sure if the president ascends to it, there are going to be multiple um, court cases against it. And I believe that any sober court will overturn um, the, the works of uh, the court. There are even issues of quorum. Uh, we know we're not getting back into the technicalities yet because our preoccupation now is to appeal to the psyche of the president to say, look, this is not healthy. It was introduced by very sentimental people who were already angry because they were being criticized left, right, and center, which is a uh, health for a democracy and for any public leader. Like I told you, the case of Obama. Uh, um, the, the White House believed that the president was not above uh, you know, criticism. And so should be elsewhere in the world, including Uganda, because we're not an island in this. Uh, people should have reason to really speak to you. Whether they think you're doing things foolishly, they should be able to tell you. Then even when you get offended, and they have reason that you, you know, you, the way you, you're conducting or managing public affairs is way below par. 
you should not, uh, you know, take them to court for having criticized you. But this law seems to uh, assume that uh, all leaders are upright, morally straight, and, uh, you know, nobody should really come out to be negative. Yeah? Even under a multi-party political dispensation, you really see that it's going to kill the spirit of the people opened up to political party uh, uh, particip participation. So, as uh, HRNJ, we are saying that it's a bad law. We are uh, at least not alone in this. Um, I know that the Uganda Law Society has already spoken to that. Our the public interest lawyers, uh, Nate Peel, have already said, speak, spoken to that. So, there are many voices that are really, really critical and don't believe in this. If you're going to, Bruno, read um, the Minority Report of Parliament, uh, Kadas of uh, Honorable Namganga, Joyce Bagala, and Tuatua, and many others, you really see that Parliament did not do a good job in passing this particular Unfortunately, many of them don't, cannot speak to what is in there. I want uh, your report at Parliament to chance on general on our MPs to go past the same. Chance on them and uh, just put them uh, on, on the spot to speak to issues within that law. Certainly they will be angers and that's when you will know that they used might over reason, over right. So when it comes to... Public. We have uh, issues with, with uh, some of our opposition leaders because they like um, criticizing or uh, bringing uh, leaders and uh, policies to book but without giving alternatives. So my question to you and is that what can you advise our parliamentarians and lawmakers when it comes to fixing the gaps uh, when it comes to computer misuse? Especially when it comes to that Act 2011, what what advice can you give them? Which areas need to be fixed and how? Uh, when we were in the Committee of Parliament and presented alternative uh, legislations that uh, already addressed the issues of uh, proposing the amendment by Honorable Bonseleko, one legislator, Honorable Bondes, asked me if it was the penal code that needed to be looked at or if it was a failure to apply, to, to apply the laws. And I said both need attention. So uh, we're on record to have advised the committee. And even the vagueness, the definitions of what is unsolicited, what is information, what is this, um, have to be addressed as well. And um, before we even, because Parliament requested us to help them with definitions that were exhaustively clear and spot on. Before we could even do that, because we're in the process of formation, we hear the report is being tabled and it's read. So, meaning they did not even allow input from the, the, the public to guide them on the process. And um, um, I'm very sad that uh, it's my colleague who presided over a committee, Honorable Magogo, and also another friend, Honorable Onseleko. And uh, of course, my other good friend, Bashir Kaziwe Mbazira, because for him, he understands us better as having been a journalist and grew through the ranks to where we are, we is now. He should have been on our side to say, okay, uh, you guys, we hear you as a journalist from that background. I know uh, uh, the detrimental effect of this legislation if passed. Uh, but um, I'm not, I'm going to defend a bit of what you said about the opposition that they only criticize. Eh? What do you do if you, you don't have the instruments of power, if you don't have resources? You know, uh, me, my only surprise is for people in government who speak like, we will, we will, we will. Governments are supposed to say, we are doing, or we have done. They're not supposed to be lamenting like people in the opposition who certainly have no access to resources to, uh, to, to change things around. If a road is bad, don't say we'll fix roads. Say we are fixing roads A, B, C, D. Don't say we'll do this. Say we are doing this. You don't lament like you're the opposition and waiting for an opportunity to get into government and work on these things. Yet you're already in government. Members of opposition, actually their cardinal role is to, call, to hold a government in power at bay. You know, to show, to show them the right way to go. They're not supposed to have budgets to implement to the government. Because even when you're going to fix a road, Bruno, to your home, you must seek for permission to fix it. Because the assumption is that they are authorities with budgets to do the same so it will be a duplication of work that's true and i appreciate your take on that although that's a discussion for another day thank you but at your spoke of friends and here on issues at hand we have our friends and family members who are our viewers and you as our viewers we are very happy to hear from you so uh, i'm going to read out the comments and questions that we have for this discussion uh, this is inid uh, kobu sinje from imbara city my question on this bill is that what happens if i rec record something or a video using my phone and post it on facebook 
Yeah, the assumption here uh, in it is that uh, you have to seek for permission. I don't from know the person who you are of the person who you're going to send it to because she is recording herself and she wants to send on Facebook for people to access. Uh, initially, it was UCC that said everybody like that needed authorization from UCC to be able to post an audio or a video. And that directive, by the way, Bruno, still stands. Only that we, we spoke about it, it was not practical and it kind of uh, was kept in the parking lot. But at an opportune time, individual personalities will be singled out to say, you defied this directive by UCC and you are accordingly uh, charged. So you have to defend yourself for having shared a video of yourself. You saw a lady who, uh, you know, was charged and is on remand for having celebrated, of course, the death of a uh, general, which is not a tradition of us to celebrate people who have died. But on her side, she will say, maybe my family has injuries, maybe my person disappeared, and this person said, somebody can shoot you. Things like that. Eh? So you don't expect people to be happy all the time and celebrate with you when you're celebrating. Some people will go to the gardens. We used to do it in, in our old good old days. When somebody on the village dies and uh, they have been a menace to the community, the demonstration that it is um, a celebrated moment, people will go to the gardens and dig before you're buried. And so they will know, hey, so this person was not a, or no good times with the other. So you do not kill that through legislation, the spirit. So it also for me is a wake up call that we must, you know, do good things so that people, if we are celebrating, they are celebrating with us. If we are mourning, they are mourning with us. Definitely. In it, uh, you have your answer there. And then I uh, thank you so much for the show. I am Jonah at uh, Kalere. Isn't Mr. Robert just against the MP and the bill? I personally <laughs> think it is regulating media use. Um, for for the person is information, uh, the MP is my friend, and so is the chairperson. And the chairperson told the committee uh, that uh, he confessed a conflict of interest as I appeared. He said, uh, MPs, I want to declare that Robert Semple is uh, my political mentor. He did it is on record in the presence of journalists because uh, we always uh, we have enjoyed a cordial working relationship with the engineer Moses Magogo for a very long time very long time before you even thought of politics we used to talk a lot of politics and uh, good things so by the time somebody mentioned is on record that you're a, a political mentor they really mean you've contributed to their nurturing to where they are so i do not have personal vendetta not hrnj has not many other people have against um, honorable bonseleko and i'm sure honorable bonseleko is one of the best legislators you can talk about if it comes to arguments but in this particular one is carrying a very heavy load which I'm very sure may not even be his, uh, but we don't want to get into such substances. Uh, what I am very sure about is that it is a bad law, and what I'm also certainly sure about is that it's going to be challenged. I'm not only sure if the president is going to sign, I will really, um, implore him not to, and you know, send it back to the committee to say you didn't do a thorough job in uh, you know, uh, recommending uh, proposal or changes in areas where the laws is, is exhaustive. Literally, they are amending other laws by introducing um, amendments to the computer means Amending like, the, good laws. Good laws, and which is uh, which is uh, unconstitutional. You do not reintroduce a law through an amendment, like say publication of false news or sharing a video or something. If the Supreme Court asserted itself onto it, you do not reintroduce the same through an amendment of another law, and that's very unconstitutional. So those are part of the grounds that we are looking at um, to challenge in case um, you know the president uh, signs on to this law. But for many people. I want to tell you that you should equally be concerned. It is called the Computer Misuse Act. But they are not only referring to a computer. They are referring to gadgets like your phones that you use to share with your people. You know, somebody, a family member might say this is an unsolicited message and Bruno takes you to court by sharing in a family group something. So the, 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 the crimes that they are introducing to humanity are untenable. You they're cannot, untenable. you know. And time will tell if indeed uh, President Museveni assents to the law. Uh, very quickly, Mr. Robert, what's your final remark when it comes to the discussion of the Computer Misuse Amendment Bill 2022? Uh, my final take is that uh, it's, it's not yet over until it is very over uh, to, to now. We still have an audience to, to seek with the president about this 
And um, that's what we should, we should preoccupy ourselves with. Uh, but mine is a wake-up call to everyone that while you think it is only tailored around journalists or people that are in the opposition that don't like uh, Muhammad in Seleko and others, you are equally sleeping in your own cause eh? or, or sleeping on, on the job. Wake up and know that you have to defend this space called freedom of expression, which is an inherent right of yours. And nobody is going to enjoy it without uh, with this law in place certainly that's a fact bruno including yourself and it is counterproductive to the media so all journalists should wake up and say we need to defend our space um at the challenge we are literally mobilizing uh, all the voices that are pushing in the same direction to say hey look come and see how we push this back even when this is pushed away the president does not, does not sign we still push to you know, read the Computer Ministries Act of 2011 of those very inhibitive and restrictive clauses that I talked about. So it's still a work in progress. It's still a work in progress, and uh, it is not yet done, and all is not has not been said. And that's why we are, we are so glad to have you here on Issues at Hand. Thank you for coming, and thank you for tackling this issue here on Issues at Hand on Family TV. We continue to tackle more issues as we want to have a Uganda that we are proud of, and we want to enjoy the rights that the Constitution somebody, has been granted to us. Somebody called Kerea Katushave says uh, she sent some, I think, a comment that's not been read but uh, i think she's watching but she needed to had a comment oh for, uh, for thank us. you claire for uh, uh, watching and uh, uh our apologies for not reading out the comment uh time was is a constraint on us but thank you for always watching and continue to participate here on issues at hand and continue to participate our dear viewer and continue to tackle these issues together with us uh, god richly bless you i uh, see you on issues at hand on friday